the Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve is brought to you, partially transcribed, by the Kraft Foods Company. There are lots of good reasons for serving Kraft's new parquet margarine. Parquet gives you everything you've ever wanted in a table spread. It looks wonderful, it tastes wonderful, and it spreads smoothly even when ice cold. Now there's still another reason for buying Kraft's new parquet regularly. With every pound, you can order a pair of famous Powers Model nylon stockings at half price. I'll tell you more about parquet margarine's sensational offer in just a minute. Nobody tries harder than the great Gildersleeve to be on good terms with everybody, especially his girlfriends. But even girls as sympathetic as Leela Ransom and Grace Tuttle find it difficult to understand how the water commissioner can make dates with each of them for the same night. Hello? Hello? Hello, Leela? How do you like that? She hung up on me. Yeah? Leroy, she won't even talk to me. Why don't you call Miss Tuttle? I did. She won't talk to me either. I don't deserve this. Why should I be cast aside like an old shoe? Because I think you're a heel? Hey. <laughs> Unc, I always thought a guy was pretty lucky being a bachelor, but I've changed my mind. I'd rather be married. Why? When you're married, you only got one woman to contend with. <laughs> well, I'm going to phone again and give Leela one more chance. <laughs> Leroy, let the dog in. Okay. <laughs> that hundred and forty pound Great Dane could knock down the door if he took a run at it. Come on, boy. <laughs> Watch it, dog. Get out. <laughs> Trying to use the phone. Maybe he thinks the receiver's a dog biscuit. <laughs> yes, yes. Get down. I have troubles enough. He has troubles too. He just handles his better than you, Unc. What? You only got two girlfriends. The dog's got about six in this block. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, I'll see if Leela's in a more receptive mood. Hello? <laughs> Who's that? Hey, me, Leela. Oops, she did it again. She'll talk to the dog, but she won't talk to you, huh? <laughs> yeah, I know what I'll do. I'll get Bertie to intercede for me. Bertie! Yes, Mr. Will you do me a favor? Yes, sir. Mrs. Ransom likes you. Will you see if you can get her to talk to me? You mean I got to straighten you out with Mrs. Ransom? Well, it would help, Bertie. The job Bertie gets around here. Bertie cooks the meals, keeps the house, and plays Cupid on the side. <laughs> I'll, uh, dial the phone, Bertie. Well, I tell her, Mr. Gilsey. Well, you might play on her sympathies. Tell her I'm not feeling well. Tell her I'm sick. Lovesick. <laughs> Leroy, I'm not lovesick. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll try to make it fast because i got a kick in the oven. Now, listen, Throckmorton. This ain't Throckmorton. This is Bertie. Oh, hello, Bertie. He's called me so many times I was beginning to think he had his finger stuck in the dial. Yes, ma'am. How are you, Miss Ransom? Just fine, Bertie. I was thinking about you just this morning. Yes, ma'am? I saw a recipe for coleslaw in the paper. I saw that recipe, too. Hey, Bertie. I said to myself, I'm going to try that for lunch. Coleslaw ought to be good with Miracle Whip. Oh, I just adore coleslaw. Hey, Bertie, come to the point. I'm going to have sandwiches and coleslaw. <laughs> Planning a menu over the phone. That's what I'm going to have. Sandwiches and cold slow. Well, I'm going to have lunch downtown. I want to go to Hogan Brothers and see those darling file suits. Oh, yes, and I saw them in the paper. Wasn't they cute? Shh, Bertie. Excuse me, Miss Ransom. Yes? Say something about me. Oh, speaking of going downtown, there's a gentleman here who'd be glad to drive you and maybe buy your lunch. <laughs> Good going. A gentleman? Yes, Mr. Gilsley. Goodbye, Bertie. Did she hang up on you, Bertie? No, sir. I think she hung up on you again. Oh, Uncle, I see enough of Miss Tuttle and 
school. Why do I have to come over to her house? Uh, chances are you can help your old uncle, my boy. She can hardly refuse to talk to me if we go over about your school problems. My problems? Well, okay, I'm the one with the problems. But if we start talking to your teacher about yours, we can ease into mine. You've given up on Mrs. Lansom, huh? Yeah, I can be as obstinate as she can. Besides, I can persuade Grace to go out with me. I won't miss Leela. She hasn't answered the door. I wonder if she saw you coming. Yes? Hello, Grace. Good morning. Hello, Leroy. Hi. Uh, Grace, I realize this is a little unusual, but being Saturday morning, I thought it might be a good time to discuss Leroy's school problem. Does Leroy have a school problem? Doesn't he? Yeah, I mean... Go ahead, Leroy. Tell Miss Tuttle about your problem. Well, uh, gosh, I've been going pretty good. Have I, Miss Tuttle? For me? <laughs> your work has been more than satisfactory, Leroy. Thanks. You, uh, glad to hear that, of course, but, uh... If you have a problem, it isn't in school. <laughs> <laughs> your homework has improved tremendously. Yeah? You, uh, well, I have to take a little credit for that. <laughs> oh, you mean you're no longer helping him? <laughs> Leroy, would you mind running along? I didn't want to come anyway. <laughs> Goodbye, Miss Tuttle, and thanks for helping me with my problems. <laughs> Goodbye, Leroy. Goodbye, Frockmorton. Now, Grace, let's be sensible about this. Let's talk this over. I'll have nothing to do with a man who makes dates with two girls on the same night and doesn't keep either one of them. Grace, that'll never happen again. You're so right. <laughs> I'll give anything to get things straightened out. Obviously, bringing your nephew over on such a silly pretext. All right. I'll admit I came over here to mend fences. Fine. I'll give you something to start on. Well... I'll give you the gate. <laughs> Grace! <laughs> Leroy, wait for me. They should realize he's going to make a mistake now and then. Yeah, maybe I should stop in Peavy's and send them each a box of candy. Hello, Peavy. Hello, Mr. Jonas Lee. <laughs> what can I do for you? Peavy, I'm still having trouble making up with Leela and Grace. You don't care. <laughs> I thought I might send them each a box of candy. Very well, Mr. Jonas Lee. You seem to have a lot of lady troubles. Well, as Leroy said this morning... A man's better off married than being a badgered bachelor like me. Well, I don't know. Hey, you take your own case. You and Mrs. Peavy have been married over 40 years. You know a man's happier with a wife. No, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Watch this. It all depends on who you marry. Mrs. Peavy and I have been very happy through the years. You, well, I'm sure you have. Of course, you might not be as lucky in marriage as Mrs. Peavy was. <laughs> I'll bet you don't tell her she's lucky. No, that's why we're so happily married. <laughs> yes, yes. Say, isn't that Clarence Olson parking out in front? Well, I believe it is. You remember when he used to steal all your girlfriends? Yeah, conceited intern. Thinks he's quite an operator. Hello, Mr. Peavy. Well, hello, Dr. Olson. And Gildersleeve. Why, what do you know? Clarence Olson. I haven't seen you for some time. No, our paths haven't crossed since we both were dating that cute little nurse. As I recall, they used to cross quite often. <laughs> yes, indeed. Oh, Mr. Peavy, do you mind putting this poster in your window? Poster? Mm-hmm. The Summerfield Symphony is giving a concert for the Heart Fund. Oh, I'll be happy to, Doctor. Oh, thank you. Now, how about you, Gildersleeve? Would you like to buy a couple of tickets? Five dollars. Oh, you bet. Here. If I know you, you'll want to take some girl. You will. I'll be glad to help the heart fund. But I don't have a girl. Oh, now, Gildersleeve. Do I, Petey? Not at the moment. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve just had two girls walk out on him. Really? Mr. Peavy, give us a Coke. I want to hear the sad story. Very well. well. Gildersleeve, you never quite learned how to handle women, did you? Now, see here, Clarence. I know what I'm doing. Uh, <laughs> it, unfortunately, I just happened to make dates with both girls for the same night, that's all. 
You know, I've apologized many times. Over the phone and at the front door. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I sent them flowers and I came in here to buy them some candy. Hey, that's right. Let's not forget that. <laughs> Gildersleeve, you're going at this all wrong. Hey, what? Look, since we're no longer rivals, I don't mind giving you a few pointers. And you need them. I do not. Do I, Phoebe? Mm, I'd listen to the man, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> oh. You're too obvious. You wear your heart in your sleeve. Yeah, on both sleeves. <laughs> yes, yes. Instead of showering a girl with presents and attention, play hard to get. Oh? Uh, be independent. Pretend you don't care if you never go out with them. That works, huh? Can't miss. The more indifferent you are, the more intrigued they are. Well, I'm not getting anywhere now. Gildersleeve, next time you see one of your girls, follow my advice. You'll thank me for the rest of your life. Uh, careful what you say, gentlemen. Here comes one of the girls now. Yeah, it's Leela. <laughs> hey, she's one of your girls? You bet. Leela, it's nice to see you. I'll be indifferent. It is... Oh, yes. What's up, Martin? Hello. Well, hello, Mrs. Ransom. Hello, Mr. Peavy. You cute little old man, you. <laughs> <laughs> what, what can I do for you? Well, I, I just want some stamps out of the machine here. <laughs> Very well. What's that poster advertising, Mr. Peavy? It's about the symphony concert. Dr. Olson here brought it in. Oh? A friend of Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, aren't you going to introduce me, Gildersleeve? Yeah, well, uh, Mrs. Ransom, may I present... Dr. Clarence Olson. How do you do, Dr. Olson? How do you do? I, I didn't know we had a Dr. Olson in town. He's an intern at the hospital. Oh, well, it's very nice of you, Doctor, to take the time to help promote the concert. Oh, I'm happy to do it. Yeah, are you going to the concert, Leela? Well, you know, I adore Symphony Throck Martin, and my phone has been ringing all morning. I suppose somebody has been calling to extend an invitation. Well, you know, I'd be delighted. Uh, uh, Gildas? Uh, what were you about to say, Throckmorton? Hey, I, I said I'd be delighted to take you. Oh? But I'm quite busy and afraid I won't be able to. Some other time, perhaps. Well. That's the idea. Yeah, I bought a couple of tickets, but, uh, P.V., why don't you and I go to the wrestling matches? Can we get in with symphony tickets? <laughs> <laughs> well, I never. What's wrong with a couple of men going to the wrestling matches? I was just about to give you another chance, Rock Martin, and let you take me to the symphony, but you burned your bridges. Now, now wait a minute, Leela. Mrs. Ransom, I hate to see a music lover disappointed. Oh? Since our mutual friend prefers wrestling, may I invite you to be my guest at the concert? Oop. I have two of the best seats in the house. <laughs> well, Dr. Olson, I accept your invitation. Good, good. May I see you to your car? Oh, you certainly may. Goodbye, Mr. Peavy. <laughs> Goodbye, Mrs. Ransom. Yeah, but Leela, Clarence. How about that, Peavy? He's just helping you play hard to get. <laughs> oh, what a sneaky way to help. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will return in just a moment. Kraft has exciting news for you about a special money-saving offer to introduce you to New Parquet, the wonderful new margarine that spreads smoothly even when ice cold. In every pound of Kraft's new parquet, you'll find the details of how to get famous Powers model nylon stockings at half price. These luxurious nylons were designed by John Robert Powers to flatter the legs of America's most glamorous models. They're 51-gauge, 15 denier, the weight most women prefer. They have a flexible top, perfect fit, and a tapered heel to slenderize your ankle. A nationally known testing laboratory examined these Powers model nylons and reports their quality and durability the equal of nylon selling regularly at one dollar and a half. But you can order as many pairs as you want for only 75 cents by just sending in one yellow end flap from a package of parquet margarine for each pair you order. Let me repeat that. These Powers Model 51-gauge 15 denier nylons are a regular $1.50 value, but you can order them for just 75 cents 
and a parquet margarine end flap. That's the yellow flap that tucks into the top of the parquet package. Choose from two of the season's smartest shades, and either a dark seam or a self-color seam. Instructions for ordering are given inside every parquet margarine package. So tomorrow, be sure to pick up Kraft's wonderful parquet, the delicious, appetizing new margarine that spreads smoothly even when ice cold. Let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. Neither Lee LaRansom nor Grace Tuttle has been speaking to the water commissioner, so he decided to take the advice of his old rival, Dr. Olson, and play hard to get. Result? Dr. Olson got Leela. That pushy intern tricked me, Bertie. Yes? Yeah. Leela was just about to forgive me and let me take her to the concert. And he took her right from under my nose. Yes. Yeah. Be indifferent, he says. Pretend you don't care, he says. Yeah, I should have known better than to take advice from a rival. Yes, sir. You still don't have a girlfriend, huh? <laughs> Leela got upset all over again. Now I'm really in the doghouse. <laughs> I'm not talking to you, dog. <laughs> He's not sure. He doesn't have a real name, so he answers every time you say dog. <laughs> See? Oh, my goodness. Miss Gilsey, I got an idea Miss Tuttle might go out with you if it's something really important. Watch this, Bertie. Well, since you bought two tickets to the symphony, you might try her. Well, I'd like to take Grace. And it'd also show Leela. Miss Tuttle won't even talk to you. She slammed the door in your face. Mr. Gillsleeve, you might try slipping the tickets under the door with a string tied to them. <laughs> Please, Bertie. Why don't you fool her, Unc? How, Leroy? Well, you can disguise yourself as a vacuum cleaner salesman. That's the most ridiculous idea I ever heard of. I wouldn't stoop to disguising myself. Well, I didn't disguise myself. I just brought the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Might help me get my foot in the door. Then I can ask Grace to go to the symphony. Yes? Is the lady of the house in? Now, see here, Throckmorton. I'm demonstrating the Jiffy Dandy vacuum cleaner. And before you say you don't need a vacuum cleaner, allow me to throw a sack of dirt on your floor. Don't you dare throw dirt on my floor. Don't worry, lady. Just read these testimonials. See what this housewife from Duluth says about Jiffy Dandy. Get your foot out of the door. Please, lady. I'm working my way through college, and I'm a little late. <laughs> Throckmorton, I can't stay angry at you. Come in, college boy. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've graduated. These are wonderful seats, Throckmorton Yeah I like to be close enough to watch the guy bang the cymbals And we're so fortunate having a symphony orchestra in Summerfield Hey They're not getting off to a very even start Tuning up, Throckmorton. Uh, tuning... Oh, yes. <laughs> Thought I'd make a little joke. <laughs> Isn't it funny how things work out? This morning I had no idea I'd be attending a concert with you tonight. Well, I'm glad I came over with my vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Are you sure you didn't try to sell it to some other girl? I suppose you mean Leela. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. Oh? I'm not dating Leela these days. As a matter of fact, she's going with someone else. Well, I suppose a girl of her type always manages to corral some unsuspecting male. No, Grace. This happens to be a young doctor in town. She probably had an appendectomy just to meet him. <laughs> I won't be surprised if they show up at the concert tonight. Well, you seem to know a lot about it. Me? Are you just chatting or regretting? It... Grace, <laughs> I'm not regretting. I'm very happy about the whole thing. You know, I've learned my lesson. Two girls on your hands at the same time spell nothing but trouble. I think these are our seats right here, Doctor. Here comes double trouble. <laughs> Why, it's Leela. They're sitting next to us. Well, it's Throckmorton with Grace. Yeah. Hello. Hello, Leela. Throckmorton, is this what you call going to the wrestling matches? 
Well, good evening, Gildersleeve. Hello. Uh, Dr. Olson, I don't believe you've met Frock Martin's little school teacher friend. No, I haven't had the pleasure. Yeah, excuse me. Hey, Miss Tuttle, this is Dr. Olson, hospital intern. <laughs> How do you do, Miss Tuttle? How do you do? Well, I see you have a date, Gildersleeve. You must have taken my advice. Pushy Swede. Well, why don't you sit right here, Leela? Uh, next to Throckmorton? The doctor tried to sit there. She'd break his arm. I declare these seats are so close together. Uh, can you get all that dress in this seat? Uh, Throckmorton. Yes, Grace. You didn't have anything to do with this cozy arrangement, I hope. Yo, no. I had no idea. I'm with you. This is just an unfortunate situation. Then stop smiling. <laughs> Well, we're just in time. I hope they don't dim the lights before everybody sees my dress. They can't miss it. It looks like a neon sign. Grace, she'll hear you. I did. <laughs> we must make quite a combination, dear, with your green eyes and hennaed hair. <laughs> Leela. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, your attention, please. Shh, listen. If Dr. Clarence Olson the hospital, Dr. Clarence Olson, please. Oh, that's you, Clarence. Oh, yes, I'm afraid I'll have to leave. What a shame. Well, there's no reason for you to miss the concert. Uh, Throckmorton. Yes? You and Miss Tuttle will see that Leela gets home, won't you? You will. That's nice of you, too. Of course, I've always felt two's company and three's a crowd. I've never felt more crowded. <laughs> Throckmorton, it was the most enjoyable concert. You're glad you liked it, Grace. Wasn't it, though? Of course, I had no idea the evening would end up a threesome. Neither did I. Oh, my George, this is great. I've got both girls back. <laughs> I declare, I don't know what I would have done if you hadn't taken me under your wing, Throckmorton. Well, Grace and I were glad to help. Yes. Yes, I believe everyone should cooperate in an emergency. Grace, ever since I've known Frock Martin, which is much longer than you, he has always come to my rescue like a knight in shining armor. You're glad I polished up the old car. <laughs> Shall we stop someplace for a soda or a hot chocolate, girl? Uh, Throckmorton, Morton, I have to get up early in the morning. Don't you think we should drive Leela home? You well. Gracious, if you have to get up early, why drive me home and come all the way back? <laughs> what? Oh, I've inconvenienced you enough already, Grace. Throck Martin, we're almost at Grace's now. Why don't we drop off? Yeah, but... After all, you and I live so close together. Perhaps you should drop me off, Throck Martin, since you and Leela are so close. Yeah, well, Grace, if you think I should. It isn't that I think you should. I was just wondering if you would. <laughs> God, Grace, this is our date. This was our date. Okay. I'll drop you off. You're not dropping me. I'm dropping you. <laughs> there goes one girl. <laughs> Well, here you are, Leela. Home. Oh, it's such a lovely night, Throck Martin. Let's sit in the car a little while before I go in. Leela, I think it's been a long evening for all of us. Throck Martin. Yeah? Are you unhappy with Leela? Oh, well, you weren't very nice to Grace. Practically pushing her out of the car. After all, I had the date with her, you know. Oh, you were going to ask me first? You know you were. Weren't you, Throckmorton? <laughs> well... And can I help it if my heart skips a beat when I see you with another woman? Now, Lou, let's face it. You weren't even speaking to me when I phoned the other morning. But Leela's in a more receptive mood at night. Leela, you change with the winds. You went to the symphony with Dr. Olson and came home with me. You seem perfectly happy with either one of us. Well, I'm happy now. Yes, yes. And a little sad, too. Oh? That I've made you unhappy. 
Oh, isn't that I'm unhappy? Then you do like Leela a teeny weeny dear? Oh, of course I like you. How much? <laughs> well... A bushel and a pear? Well... If you say a bushel, I might give you a pear. <laughs> Mm. Leela, I like you a bushel. Then here's your pick. Oh! oh, gracious. Who bumped the back of our car? Hello. Old sir. What, Clarence? Gildersleeve, thanks for taking care of my girl until I got back. Zeke, there goes the other one. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Tomorrow's the day to buy Kraft's wonderful new parquet margarine, the margarine that spreads smoothly even when ice cold. You'll enjoy parquet's fresh, appetizing taste, and you'll also enjoy the opportunity to build a glamorous hosiery wardrobe at half price. In every package of parquet margarine are full instructions for getting famous Powers Model nylon stockings for just 75 cents in a parquet package end flap. Remember, craft delicious new parquet when you shop tomorrow. Nice of you to come by school to pick me up, Unc. Well, I thought you'd like a ride home, Leroy. At first, I thought maybe you came just to get a look at Miss Tuttle. No, indeed, my boy. Nobody is further from my mind than Miss Tuttle. Yeah, I noticed she didn't speak to you when you parked outside our classroom window. Oh, well. How you doing, Mrs. Ransom? Great. I may drop by after I take you home. Say, you met Dr. Olson parked up ahead? Yeah. Wonder why he's sitting there. Yeah, I don't know. But I'm going to drive up behind him and give him a bump. Yeah? You think you ought to? Yeah. He bumped me last night. Now it's my turn. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to push him halfway down the block. <laughs> yeah, this will pay him back for taking Leela away from me last night. Hey, he's calling for you, huh? Yeah. Thanks, Gildersleeve. What? Thanks for the push. I couldn't start my car and I'm late for a date with Leela. <laughs> oh, cool. Good night, Joe. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Lillian Randolph, George Neese, Mary Shipp, Shirley Mitchell, Pinto Kalvig, and Dick Legrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> There's something new and wonderful about Kraft Oil. It now comes to your kitchen as fresh as it was the minute it was made, because it's bottled in a new way. Any salad and cooking oil is better when it's fresh. And now Kraft Oil, and only Kraft Oil, is guaranteed fresh with an airtight vacuum cap. Be sure to get a bottle of Kraft Oil tomorrow. The freshest oil you'll ever buy is lighter-bodied, better-blending Kraft Oil. <laughs> Tonight, play You Bet Your Life on NBC.